All right, take a look at that. That car is full. That means I've got to get myself to the post office. Let's hit it. Well, okay folks, here I am back with another exciting shop with me. I'm at one of my favorite secondhand stores in West Philadelphia. And here I am plowing through the furniture department, not much to be seen today. I don't think there's been a lot of uh, donations going on. I guess, well, it's the time of the year, the weather, and so forth. So the shelves aren't very exciting, but I'm going to pick through the artwork here as I usually do. That was kind of neat. I have old typewriters at home, but nothing like any framed art such as that. It was cool. Ooh. All right. Get that camera steady there, Scott. Look out for the lady. Now, in case you're new to the old curiosity shop, you may see me pass by things that have value that I don't pick up and really don't have any interest in, in interest in buying and selling. I love 1920s, 30s, and 40s. As you know, I'll go back into the Victorian era. That bleak was cracked. And I'll also dip into the 50s, 60s, and occasionally the 70s. Uh, but not much more than that. Some figurines, hummels, whatnot. This was okay. I would date this to the 40s or the 50s. The decal on it reminds me of any number of American dinnerware pattern uh, pieces. Eh, I don't know, it just didn't speak to me. Did, did that boot speak to you? There's a mermaid, which I guess is a toothbrush holder I don't know this is cute what does it say there made in England little cup and saucer I know there are people who collect individual cups and saucers 250 eh. by the way uh, I am going to show you at the end of this video things that I end up buying there's a little anchor hocking ruby red Ooh, 450 nah it's about what I could sell it for. <clears throat> Some earthenware here. And in a minute, I'm going to pick up a piece that, oh, I cannot remember right now who made it. It's not Watt Pottery. Uh, it's often confused for that. Uh, I have bought and sold these before, and right now I just simply cannot remember uh, the maker of this. Just. It's escaping me at the moment, but I didn't buy this. There were some cracks on it, I think. Oh, he's cute. Eh, one ear. Mm-hmm. Pretty bleak, isn't it? What's going Oh, I had to match these two back up again. <laughs> Too bad it's broken. Mm. 
This was nice. I liked the paintwork on this decorative decoy. I thought it was nicely done. I like the way it's chipped off in places. That would be a nice decor piece for the autumn season. 1986 it says on the bottom. I guess someone painted it. It was only 450, but having just come off of several big huge autumn sales, I I'm not really purchasing items for next autumn quite yet. Uh, I know folks say, "Oh, you should have bought that and put it away." Well, I have to think about storage space and where I put things and just not really. And I'm just not in tune to buying items for the fall. Now that's not old. It's kind of in the shape of a depression console bowl, but it surely isn't. Oh, he lost his head, bless his heart. I lost a tooth. Haven't lost my head yet. I am losing my hearing. <laughs> but that's hereditary. Ugh. Hmm. And they still had that thing out without his head. What's up top? Well, I didn't see anything. There's one of those milk glass hurricane uh, oil lamp shades. I just walked right by it. I guess I wasn't in the mood. I'm always looking at the lamps. I didn't see anything that was going to work for me today. I'm moving pretty fast there. I'm getting dizzy. <clears throat> I don't like the way they throw the artwork in these big cardboard boxes it often gets scratched up but um, oh here's one of those well I guess I thought maybe it could be uh, left in holly berry pattern uh, turning it upside down I think I discover it's just a homemade piece and that's okay but I think some of the points were chipped on it and <laughs> just didn't buy it I just did get, what's that, Scratch It Rainbow? Scratch It Rainbow? I don't know what that is. Ah, the ubiquitous chrome cream and sugar. Hundreds of thousands of those were made in the 1930s and early 40s. I have several sets of them. I wasn't interested in that set. Now down the glass aisle. I'm going to go pretty fast here. Again, I'm zooming in first on uh, color. I'm looking for depression glass colors or mid-century colors. Now, this was a cute little owl. Nicely painted. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm not sure why I paused there. I see a chip and dip set down below. Those are kind of big, somewhat difficult to ship. I think it was a chip and dip set. Oh my goodness, there we go. Poor old Anchor Hawking's milk glass deviled egg plate. Now that thing is an ice bucket and it's missing one of its, uh, I don't know, the things that sticks out on the side for the handle. And I can't remember that pattern. It's in the back of my head and I can't think of it. Hmm. Even hours later sitting here, I cannot remember the name of that pattern. This pretty color blue. Heavy glass, but I wasn't getting the feeling that it was mid-century, so I left it there. Two little Corel Christmas mugs, and I think two little plates underneath. I've bought and sold them before. I kind of like those little Christmas mugs by Corel. Our Corning Corel. Some more uh, made in Japan. China, probably from the 1930s. I did find some things and I'm going to show you. I, I promise you we're going to head out to the kitchen counter in a few minutes. And I'm also going to show you what I bought at the AIDS thrift shop, the Philly AIDS thrift shop the other day. Fantastic place. And they've donated tens of thousands, probably hundreds of thousands by now uh, to the research into HIV and AIDS, uh, a cure for HIV and AIDS. It's a wonderful place. I absolutely love that shop. I'm gonna show you what I bought. 
Now, I think I see, I saw, but I didn't pick it up, one of those old 30s Pyrex uh, casseroles in a chrome holder. I think I saw, just saw that while I was sitting here watching and I didn't pick it up. It is sometimes difficult when you're filming because you're looking at the camera, you're moving, you're looking, you're talking sometimes, you're looking for things, and it's easy to overlook something. Well, as promised, here we are, back on the kitchen counter. Let's see what's what. Now, I've divided this haul into two halves. One half uh, are things that came from the Philly AIDS thrift store, which you saw me shopping in the other day, but I didn't show you what I bought. No, 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 no. I had to save it for today as a surprise. And then the other items came from local flea markets or thrift shops. I think I gave you a sneak peek at some of those items before. We'll start right in the front here with this beautiful Czech, Czech <laughs> with this beautiful Czechoslovakian uh, Bohemian decanter set, probably uh, made after the war. I'm pretty certain that it was. Uh, there's the decanter there. When you buy these sets, now these sets are not rare. Czechoslovakian glass, Bohemian glass. You can find uh, these pretty readily, but you want to make sure that you get all six glasses and there's no cloudiness and the decanter, and as well that you have the original stopper. So here are the four cordials. This one has a nice little foil label on it, which I would love for that to focus for us. I think that's the best we're going to do. You know, even without that label, you don't need it. There's no doubt it's Czechoslovakian glass. And I'll let you see there is no cloudiness in the decanter and fantastic to have an original stopper. The stoppers should match. Pretty set. Now you Pyrex experts know that that's the... Ooh, what is it? The hostess giveaway thing? Hostess party? I'm saying that wrong, I know. I think this is what was given away to people who hosted parties of some sort, similar to Tupperware, I really don't know because I'm not that much into Pyrex, but it's in really good condition without any chips or cracks on it. Inside is nice and clean. There's one funny little smudge on here that you can't see unless you shine light through it. Now hold on, I'm trying not to drop this. All right, from the front, you don't see anything. When you get it up in the light bulb, you see, aha. Now that's not dirt or anything. It appears as though something smudged this glass when it was being made. And uh, that's not going to come off, but who's gonna stick their Pyrex dish up in a light bulb like that? <laughs> Otherwise you don't see it. Put this lid back on. By the way, these are things that came from local flea markets and thrift shops and whatnot. There's the Fenton draped vase custard glass. It has uranium. It's going to glow under a black light, and I'll show you that at the end of the video. Pretty crimped edge, custardy color, and we can see the the drape there, which is actually a reverse drape. Huh? Yeah, I think so. Ooh, there's a little bit of dirt in there. And then back there's the beautiful um, blue, you can call it azurite, you could call it powder blue, or delphite, or robin's egg blue, I suppose, whatever you want to call it. And it's the, the uh, cake stand by Mosser. Not old, but I bought it because they're very popular. Uh, let's see if we can get it out of there. It's very heavy, beautiful glass. Almost reminds me of slag glass because it has that sort of swirly white color inside of the glass you can see. 
Very pretty. And they're known for their cakes. Well, now let's travel out to California and go back to the 1870s, 1880s. And uh, four gentlemen get together and they formulate a company called Gladding and McBean. Now, I don't know why the other two didn't get their names in headlines, but Gladding and McBean. Now, they were making things out of terracotta. And I don't think it was until the 1920s when they started inquire, uh, to acquire some other smaller companies, like small pottery companies. And in 1941, they launched this Desert Rose pattern right here, which was uh, an erased pattern, all hand-painted hand, hand -painted earthenware uh, dinnerware here in the U.S. Very different from European styles, and it was a huge hit, to say the least. This went on to be one of the most popular, and it went on to become one of the best-selling and most popular um, casual dinner sets of all time. And this, of course, is uh, the Desert Rose. Now, I have uh, 12 rimmed soup bowls here. I don't often buy this because there's a lot of it out there. As I said, it was made for many years. Starting in 1941, then I think sometime in the 60s, they sold their company. And then at some point in the late, I believe the late 70s, the uh, Franciscan dinnerware line was acquired by Wedgwood and Sons of England. And uh, from the mid 80s on, uh, anything that was made in the Desert Rose pattern was made in England. And it will say that on the back. Now I purchased these 12 rimmed soup bowls because of their condition and their back stamps. The condition on these is near perfect. There's no crazing, and there are no chips on any of it. Now I've divided them into two stacks of six. This stack right here has got the older back stamp, which is going to go all the way back, I think, to its inception in 1941. <clears throat> American made, of course, and then this set over here, ooh, what, what happened there? Uh, we saw the light. This set over here is still the American made, and we see uh, um, a back stamp there that actually looks like a little television screen. So I don't know my dates on these, but this is probably a back stamp that dates then into the 50s and 60s. But all, both stacks completely American made, and as I said, the condition on these is unbelievable. I don't think they've been used, and if they have, someone took very good care of them. I will probably be able to sell these for about $50 per stack. Um, and I paid $20 for the 12 of them, so I hope to make about an $80 profit on these plates right here. They're just beautiful. And then all bunched up in the back here, I've got, oh, maybe 20 character glasses from the 1950s into the early 70s. I won't go through all of them, I'll just highlight a few, and if you're interested, you'll see lots of photographs on the website, the internet website, uh, my eBay store, there we go. The link to the Curiosity Shop is in the description box below if you see anything you're interested in. But I've got them all separated into auctions. We have some Looney Tunes down here, uh, some wonderful, uh, this would be... Um, mm. That's Howdy Doody right there. And we can see the 1953 mark on the bottom. These all have, these had Welch's, uh, Welch's jelly in them. We have some of the Archie's cartoon. Uh, the Flintstones are here as well. I think this is the Flintstones here. I see Wilma. Lots of Looney Tunes, as I said. There's Tweety. And Sylvester chasing Elmer Fudd and Bugs has, is bound to be in there somewhere. Uh, so I hope you'll check those out if you if you get an opportunity. Each one has a surprise. This encourages the children to finish their juice in the morning because when they get to the bottom of the glass, they get a surprise. There's Tweety in the bottom of that one, and you never know who's going to be. There's Daffy on the front, but Tweety in the bottom. You got to drink your milk to see. Which character will be smiling at you from the bottom? Now the stuff I got from the Philly AIDS thrift shop. 
wonderful, wonderful place. I love it, and look what I got. Everybody knows what this is. Here is a wonderful Anchor Hawking Peach Luster Matching Bowl and Base Lotus Leaf. I think this is the one they call the Lotus Leaf. And uh, I seldom find these. Now you see it's not marked, but we know it's Anchor Hawking's Peach Luster. I only found that one. Beats me. Look at that. Oh my goodness. They're glowing with even out of black light. Six Cups and Saucers Depression Era in green. Obviously, there's lots of uranium in there. Can you drink out of it? Yes, you can. Um, yes, you can. I'm not sure of the maker, but they're absolutely stunning. I'm going to continue to do some research. What I really like about these is that there's no etching on them. It's just beautiful glass, and it's good glass, too. Um, <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Uh, these were two dollars each, a wonderful price. I paid 50 cents for the one tin from the 1940s. It's got a rose on the front. There would have been six of the, I'm sorry, there would have been probably three or four of these coffee tea. There's no label on it, which makes it nice, so it's pretty versatile. Again, the 40s, the paint is in good shape. And the last thing that which gave me detached retina is this Art Deco vase right here. Wow. It's actually made of metal, okay? So it's not pottery that's been spray painted this, with this sort of uh, metallic silver radiator paint. It's made of metal. It is classic Art Deco. I haven't been able to really find anything out about it. Maybe you research lovers could check for me. I couldn't really tell if that was an APO or an APC, if it was a C, if it was a C uh, that just didn't get, or I'm sorry, an O that didn't get stamped all the way, like AP, APC, I don't know. And then V11. What can you find, everybody? APC, APO, V11. I haven't had a really, haven't had much of a chance to look it up. It's got to be circa 1930. I wonder if it might be European. I'm not sure. <laughs> I just, I love this. This was four dollars and oh boy am I keeping that. So I'm keeping the uranium, the vase. I'm keeping, this probably is going to be sold. The Franciscan is definitely being sold uh, and I'll probably throw this up as well. So wonderful, all from the Philly AIDS thrift shop. And then these items from elsewhere. And it's all, or at least mostly all, listed in the old Curiosity Shop. As I said, the link is in the description box below. I'd like to thank everyone for watching. I love your comments. If you are watching and you've never had a chance to subscribe, it would be great if you'd subscribe. I would love it. And hit that little bell. You'll always know when I post a video. I try to post mm, three or four a week. And I'm usually every other day, but sometimes there'll be videos every day. I'm Scott, wishing you all well. Thanks for watching, and so long for now.